Hi, everybody. Welcome to Met Psych Health. This is Dr. Hanna. For those of you who don't know, I am a child and adolescent psychiatrist in northern New Jersey, outside of New York City. We're continuing in our series, The Truth About Psychiatric Medications in Kids and Teens. And today we're going to talk about ADHD medications. Um, so what are the ADHD medications? And um, most of us tend to classify ADHD medications into two categories, the stimulants and the non-stimulants. Most people are probably more familiar with the stimulants. Those are the medications that have been around for a long time. Um, you've probably heard about Ritalin, Focalin, Adderall. So those are the stimulants. But there's also another category where we call uh, brilliantly here non-stimulants, right? Um, the non-stimulants are medications that are totally different than stimulants. And, and, the, and here is a, a major way they're different. One, they're actually not controlled substances. So, so that, and that has implications and I'll talk about that in a few minutes. But, but practically speaking, the DEA, the Drug Enforcement Agency that monitors and schedules some of these medications into different categories says these medications do not have any addiction potential. They're not potentially habit forming. The stimulants are what they call a schedule two which that means there's some level of potential habit formation of, of addiction. The non-stimulants, there's here are probably the major ones. The major ones are um, atamoxetine, which is on the market under the name Stratera, and then clonidine and guanfacine. Guanfacine is either under the name brand name Tenex, or some of you maybe have heard of Intuniv, which is extended release form. So, so uh, under the non-stimulants, we have guanfacine, clonidine, and atomoxetine. These medications typically are taken every single day, and they build up over time, which is very different than the way the stimulants are done. So this is an important point when you're trying to make a decision about whether you should take an ADHD medication for yourself or put your son or your daughter on it is to understand that the non-stimulants need to be taken every day. And they build up over time where a lot of times we don't necessarily see the benefit right away. Now I've had patients who will say, hey, I actually did notice that, you know, my child, my, you know, my son or daughter was calmer right away, which is, it doesn't mean you're imagining things, but generally in order to truly evaluate their effectiveness, we usually like to wait a couple of weeks. Now, it's also important to understand that you should not take these as needed. These are not the kind of thing that um, you wanna just be taking them when you feel like taking them. Oh, I feel hyper, let me take them. Now, these medications should be taken as prescribed by your physician um, you know, or your um, whoever the healthcare provider, whether it's a nurse practitioner or a physician assistant who's prescribing it, take it as prescribed. Don't take it just when you feel like it. Because a lot of people are used to the idea of the stimulants where you could do that, where you can take a Ritalin as needed. So, so the non-stimulants, again, are atomoxetine, clonidine, and guanfacine. There's an extended release form of guanfacine, which is a one-a-day medicine, comes in ones, twos, threes, and fours, uh, milligrams, that is. And you can either do it in the morning or night. I prefer initially to do it in the morning um, just as a kind of it's easy with breakfast as a good, you know, as a good habit to do that. If the person gets really tired from it, then we could potentially switch it to the evening. I'm not in this video, I'm not going to talk about the potential negative side effects that will be in another video. But of course, these medications have potential negative side effects. So that's, that's a given and should always be factored into the decision. And then we'll talk um, in another video about the potential negative side effects of, the, of this class of medications. Then we have the stimulants. So the stimulants are, here are the major categories of the stimulant. Methylphenidate, and Ritalin is probably the most prominent brand name. A lot of people are also familiar with Concerta. And then we have the mixed amphetamine salt, which is the Adderall category. Again, people are very familiar with Adderall, Vyvanse. There's other brands, by the way, um, that over the last 10 years, there's been an explosion of the number of brands that have come out in the methylphenidate category and in the mixed amphetamine salt category. Liquid forms, chewable forms, me, just many different forms. There's a lot of pharmaceutical companies that are coming out with many different brands of a methylphenidate-based medicine and a mixed amphetamine salt-based medicine. Um, 
And, and a lot of times people are saying, well, you know, which one's the best one? Well, they're all still the same substance. The uniqueness is the delivery, how long it takes to kick in, what time of the day they should take it. Um, for example, there's a medication um, that can be taken at night, right? Journey PM, right? That can be taken at night, which is very counterintuitive for a stimulant, which by the way, causes wakefulness and causes alertness. That's why it's called a stimulant. Um, and then other categories are dextroamphetamine. Uh, it's been around on the market for a long time under the uh, generic, uh, the brand names Dexedrine or Dextrostat. And then there's dexmethylphenidate, better known as Focalin. And then there's an extended release form, Focalin extended release. So those are the four, four uh, major um, categories within the stimulants. Now the stimulants are controlled substances. Practically speaking, what that means is that your prescriber cannot do a refill on them. That's not because they're being mean or they're trying to control you. It's because they can't, according to federal law and according to the DEA, you can't do it. Um, you can electronically prescribe stimulants, which before we could not do in many states, we had to do an actual paper prescription and we could never phone it in or fax it in. Now, because of electronic prescribing in some states, I practice in New Jersey and um, New York state, which is right next door to us, you can electronically prescribe um, these medications now. Now, here's the interesting thing. Different than the non-stimulants, remember why I said they have to be taken every day, the stimulants can be taken potentially on an as-needed basis. Now, I'm going to qualify that. I'm not saying they should be, but they can be. In other words, they work that if you take them at four o'clock on a Tuesday, they could potentially kick in within 20 to 30 minutes and give you benefit right then and there. The side effects, by the way, the risks are still there, um, you know, that day you take them. An interesting phenomenon that we see is, let's say you're taking a stimulant every single morning, your body can adjust to the negative side effects, which again, remember, I'm not gonna discuss in this video, it will be in another video, and your body will learn to tolerate, um, especially some of the nuisance side effects, and I'll talk about that um, again in the future. The extended release form of the stimulants needs to be taken in the morning because it can cause insomnia. See that I brought up a side effect, I lied. Um, if you take it too late in the day. So you need to take it in the morning with food because if you take it too late in the day, there's gonna be a steady level of that medicine in the bloodstream and it will cause insomnia. Journey PM, which is a medication that can be taken in the evening doesn't, it is different. It's a different medication that the way it releases, it does not cause insomnia, but will provide benefit, benefit first thing in the morning. The stimulants typically can be taken even during the school week and then take a break on weekends. They can be taken during the school year and then you take a break during summer break. However, for some people, that's not a good idea. For some people doing the on and off puts them at high risk for side effects when they restart the medicine. And for some families, and, and I think if you're a parent who's had a child with ADHD who lends, tends to be hyper or impulsive, you find that they need to take it every day. Now, let me, let me finish up here by saying one major point. The potential benefit of the medicine has to weigh its risk. These medications do have real negative side effects. And you need to understand that when you're making a decision about these medications. The medicine has to be worth it. And so that's why I will discuss negative side effects in another video. But the main concept here is potential benefit has to outweigh risks. The risks of not treating have to be so significant that it's worth taking the risk with the side effects. In other words, things have to be bad enough for you to risk either taking the medicine yourself or putting your son or daughter on these medications. Because it's not something you just try. These medications have real negative side effects. There's a reason why they're controlled substances. There's a reason why they're what we call schedule two medications that you can't refill. It's not just because of somebody trying to control you because there are legitimate true negative side effects that need to be monitored very closely and need to be taken seriously. Please understand this point. Because a lot of times people want to just try something. First of all, you have to make sure that there's a legitimate reason to take it. 
that there's a true ADHD diagnosis, that you're not taking it just so you can excel, right? Or to stay awake or to lose weight or to um, have more energy. Those are not legitimate reasons to take ADHD medications. There has to be a legitimate, real reason to take these medications. And again, potential benefit has to outweigh risk. And the, there has to be a significant enough problem to take this medicine. And that significant enough problem is so bad that the risks of the medicines are worth taking. Hope that's helpful. Uh, we're gonna be continuing um, in many more videos about the truth about psychiatric medications um, in kids and teens. Please subscribe to our channel um, to, so you can uh, stay abreast of all the different uh, videos we will be sharing. And please share this if you think this would be helpful to a friend or a family member. Thank you.